Wilson. I'm here to talk about thankfulness. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. As we gather with people we love, and we sit and we eat as much of those starches and sugars that we want. <laughs> Never mind the turkey. And we laugh, and we're just glad that we are together. So when I speak about gratitude today, it is personal, not remote or theoretical. As I thought about what thankfulness means, I set out a visual net to capture those and that for which I am thankful. The net first shown on those close to home. I'm deeply thankful every day for my 60 plus years of partnership with John. <laughs> for laughter, challenging thinking, spiritual depth, and always, always, the mutual appreciation of the antics of Laurel and Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thankful for the three children and seven grandchildren that resulted from that partnership. As I spread the net wider, I included other family members and friends from whom I learned so much and received great affirmation for being the person I became and am continuing to become. I even have to thank those who were not charmed by my early recalcitrance <laughs> when I decided I would do something my way. Sometimes their correction was helpful, other times it taught me to be firmer, stubborn, yes, maybe. I thank my grandmother, who believed that Jesus lived with her every day in her interactions with people, and I thank my dad, who said, I don't know where you get your ideas. <laughs> and he nonetheless encouraged me to explore those ideas. John and I have often talked about how fortunate we are to have been born when and where we were, with caring parents who valued education and community involvement Mine were even Republicans. <laughs> and they raised me to know the responsibility of voting and actively participating in the welfare of the country. So some of this is luck, as Raleigh attested to some weeks ago. But we hope we can make sense out of the luck we have been given. And we're thankful for the people who are around us that can help us make sense. We are living in dark times when it's often hard to know what to be thankful for. Times when many people seem only to think of themselves and not the welfare of a community. It does take a village, not only to raise a child, but to build healthy lives for us all. I am encouraged when I hear the rising up of voices and see the actions of people who are not willing to let this country decline into self-centeredness. Amen. Amen. <laughs> people who had been uninvolved are now becoming involved to protect not just their interests, but the well-being of all of us, a world where all will thrive. And for that, I am thankful. And I am thankful I am in the right place with the right people to help make that happen, especially within St. Francis. And I am thankful not only for those joyous times, but also for some of the worrisome and darker ones. The miracle of my dad's opening his frightened heart to allow our adopted dark-skinned baby to enter and to hold him and call him honey. The grief we felt when we learned that our daughter's son was disabled and would not ever have what we call a normal life. And then the joy we felt when we were with him and knew he saw some things we didn't. 
and then the dark time, when we were part of two families who held hands and sang as the life support was removed from him. We sat, sang him home and give, gave thanks for having had him with us. The net then becomes a circle and spans wider to include this remarkable part of the country where nature expresses itself in beautiful, reasonable abundance. Where the sunrises and sunsets are astonishing and the skies are startling. Where the flora and fauna know just how much to take and how much to leave and when. And then I look out at all of you and know the circle is wider still and includes this loving body of people for whom I am grateful. And I say a prayerful thanks for all that is. And then I pray for a coming together of all people who will understand and abide kindly with each other as my grandmother.